Hello, hello everyone. Jamie Troll here, your favorite CPA and profit strategist. And today we're gonna be talking about everyone's favorite topic, taxes. But the good thing about it is we're not just going to be talking about taxes. We're going to be talking about ways to save on taxes. So today, specifically, we're going to be talking about five easy strategies for business owners to save on taxes. So we're talking about the easy ones. Now, importantly, very, very importantly here, I am not a tax loophole person. I don't love them. I don't love the idea of loopholes. I think sometimes they can get a little bit sus. Sometimes we can get information off of things like TikTok that really don't give us the information that we need. And it's really not great information when it comes to tax strategy. So what I'm talking about here today aren't those crazy little obscure loopholes. And they're not things that are hard to do. I'm not talking about going out and buying a whole bunch of real estate to get all of these tax savings. I'm sure there are plenty of different ways you can save money that way, but we're talking about for real business owners. What are real strategies that you can start doing today to start saving money on your taxes, okay? So we're gonna get started. I'm gonna talk about five of those best strategies that you want to do, and then one that you really should avoid. And that one you should avoid is all over social media. So I definitely want you to stick around for that one. Okay, we're gonna start with the most basic way to obviously save money on taxes as a business owner, but there's a little bit of nuance to it. And that very first way is to make sure you're taking all the deductions that you are entitled to. Okay, deductions will reduce the amount of money you have to pay taxes on. So remember, you're gonna have revenue that comes into your business, but thankfully you don't pay taxes on that. What you pay taxes on is the revenue minus your business expenses, at least the deductible business expenses that is, which honestly, most expenses that are truly for your business and are being used in your business are gonna be business expenses. Entertainment really being the one that sticks out as something that really is not going to be deductible, but pretty much everything else probably will be if you can make a good case for it. Now, I'm not going to be giving any specific advice on deductions necessarily today. Again, you'll wanna to talk to a service provider about your specific situation. I am a CPA, but I'm not your CPA. So just make sure that you're talking about it with your service provider. I'm not giving you any specific advice on your situation. But what I will say is that a lot of times businesses are missing deductions, or they're missing out on maximizing those deductions. So for example, a lot of businesses have deductions for things that they're already paying for, maybe in their personal life, but really could be deducted through their business. And you wanna make sure that you're including that. So one of the things that I always do, if I go to Target or something like that, and I'm picking up things for my family, and maybe a few things, even if it's pens and paper and things like that that I plan to use in my business, I always separate it into two different checks out transactions. Why do I do that? Well, that's a heck of a lot easier than trying to, you know, circle it on a receipt and then go back and add it into my QuickBooks. Chances are I'm not going to do that, right? So if I ring it all up under my personal credit card, it's I'm probably going to lose a deduction. I'm going to forget about it. But if I ring it up separately and I use, you know, my business credit card, my business debit card in order to pay for that, then I'm going to get that deduction in my business. I'm not going to forget to take it, right? So again, a lot of these office supplies, things like that, even portions of potentially your cell phone bill, portions uh, of your internet bill at home, especially if you use your home as a home office, portion of your home office. There's a lot of things you can deduct in there. And another area where people are routinely missing out on deductions that they actually could take in their business is travel. And there are lots of rules. I mean, the IRS has tons and tons of rules around travel and what's deductible and what's not deductible, but there are a lot of ways that you can structure your travel such that you can maximize your write-offs even if you're traveling you know, for both business and personal right? There are still things that you will be able to deduct if you set it up the right way. So knowing all of that is really key and understanding what those rules are so that you don't miss out on any of those deductions for things that you're already paying for. Now, if you're curious about what some of these deductions are, if you wanna get things organized when it comes to your taxes, I do have a bundle for that. If you're interested, there is a deal for YouTube that is running right now. I'm not sure if it will be when you're watching this, but you can go check out jamietroll.com forward slash tax time and what's included in there if you wanna go deeper in the world 
called uh, deductions. So now let's move on to the second easy tax strategy for business owners. And that is making sure that you're getting all the tax credits that you qualify for. Okay, you want to be aware of what those tax credits are and how to qualify for them. And you do not want to miss out on those if you qualify. Now, I was just talking about deductions. Now I'm talking about tax credits. What is the difference between a deduction and a credit? Are they the same thing? They are not. <laughs> they are very, very different things. And in fact, tax credits are way better than tax deductions, okay? Tax credits are greater than tax deductions. Why? Well, let's talk about what each one of those things really represents. Like I said before, a tax deduction is reducing your taxable income. So if you spend $100 for something in your business and it's a business expense, you get to write that off. But that doesn't mean you're gonna save $100 on your taxes. It's just gonna reduce the amount of income that you need to pay taxes on by $100. So what that means is you're actually going to take that $100 and multiply it by your effective tax rate to figure out how much money that deduction is actually saving you. So let's say you have a 25% tax rate, then you spend $100 in a business deduction, which reduces your profit that you're taxed on. Then you're going to take that $100 times 25%, and you'll see that essentially you're gonna get $25 back on that purchase in taxes. You're gonna save $25 on taxes because you bought that $100 thing. You still spent $75. You're still negative $75 because of it, but at least you get some benefit from being able to deduct it in your business. A tax credit is not that way, however. A tax credit will lower your tax liability dollar for Dollar, meaning a $100 tax credit saves you $100 on your taxes. Okay, it's not times your effective tax rate or anything like that. It just takes that amount off your taxes. That's why tax credits are so incredibly powerful and you do not want to miss out on them. And they do routinely put out new credits, uh, both on the personal side and on the business side. And really those credits usually align with whatever the government is trying to encourage you to do, right? So right now, a couple of big tax credits that exist out there are the R&D, Research and Development Tax Credit. That's something that you can get for doing research research and development in your business for innovation, right? And there's lots of rules and regulations on how to qualify, but if that could be you, you're gonna wanna make sure you've looked into that and potentially talk to a service provider about whether that applies to you and what kind of documentation you might need to keep in order to take that tax credit. And there's also the Work Opportunity Tax Credit, WOTC. And that is a great credit because it really is rewarding people who are going to hire those people who might otherwise have barriers to to employment. So that could be people who have some sort of disability, that could be veterans, uh, that could be people who have a criminal record, but you can get special tax benefits potentially if you hire them and you document everything and you do everything the way that you're supposed to in order to be able to get this credit. So again, being aware of that, you might already be doing that in your business and not taking the credit for it. So you definitely wanna make sure to be getting the tax credits that are due to you. There were certain COVID tax credits, some which are still around, including the employee retention tax credit that you can still get as I'm recording this right now in the middle of 2023. It is still something that is possible to get. There are a lot of watch outs with the employee retention tax credit. Go watch some of my other YouTube videos about it. Don't go with some of the big firms that are, you know, these ERC mills that are out there trying to charge you tons and tons of money for it. But go watch one of my other videos if you think that that might apply to you. That was for people who kept workers on during the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, so we've talked about deductions, we've talked about credits, let's move on to easy strategy number three to save money on taxes. And that is really about being the right entity type. And if y'all have watched this channel, if you are a subscriber, you know that I have so much content as it relates to entity types, explaining the differences, lots and lots of content around S corporations when it's right for you. But I will say that you need to make this decision on an individual basis. There are some general rules of thumb you may hear out there, but ultimately before you make the decision to potentially elect S Corp, you wanna make sure that you have a detailed review done by somebody who is not just doing a back of the envelope calculation, but somebody who is really factoring in 
everything, including things like the QBI deduction, which I will not get into, but it makes it a lot more complicated than it used to be to figure out who will benefit by being an S corporation. But I do really advocate for making sure you're checking that because it could be thousands or even potentially tens of thousands of dollars uh, that you could save just by being the right entity type. Although, I'll give you a spoiler alert, I sometimes do think that the benefits are a little tad, tad bit overblown sometimes. <laughs> For the right business though, it does make sense and I have an S corporation myself, so obviously I know a thing or two about it. If this is a topic you're interested in, specifically figuring out when and if becoming an S corporation is right for you, I have a free guide for you, totally free, jamietrollcom forward slash S corp checklist. That's my S corp success checklist that will get you started in thinking about whether or not being an S corp is right for you and what you need to consider before you make that decision. All right, moving on to easy tax strategy number four. This one, while it is an easy tax strategy, I understand that it is slightly more complicated in practice, but I still think it's something really worth talking about, and that is hiring your kids. Especially if you have minor children, hiring your kids can be a huge tax benefit for you, and it can really set them up for financial success later in life. I've been doing so much content on this over the last couple of months because I just hired my nine-year-old son, and yes, you absolutely can do that. There are exemptions to child labor laws for parent-owned businesses. Now, of course, I'm doing it responsibly. He's only working a couple hours a week and he's really enjoying it, but it's allowing him to make some of his own money to really learn how to work for somebody and to figure out how to manage money as well. And additionally, I get to then contribute to a Roth IRA for him. So I recently did a video on that. Again, go check out my channel. If you haven't liked and subscribed, please do that because I have so much <laughs> information that goes deeper into each one of these different topics if you really want to uh, find out more. Now, the general benefit of hiring your kids is a fewfold, but ultimately, if you do it correctly, oftentimes they will be exempt from potentially all taxes, right? That includes income tax, social security tax, uh, Medicare tax, and unemployment tax. <laughs> so if you do it correctly, and depending on how much they end up getting paid, they may pay a 0% tax rate, which is probably a lot cheaper than whatever your tax rate would be. If you wanna know more about hiring your kids and the tax strategy behind that and how it works, definitely go to my free guide. It just came out, jamietrell.com forward slash kids tax strategies. It's kind of long, kids tax strategies. <laughs> and check out and download that free guide. Okay, we have finally reached number five. Now remember, I have one more that is a don't, but we've reached the fifth do when it comes to easy tax strategies to save you money on taxes as a business owner. And that is contributing to a retirement account. Now, there are various different types of retirement accounts, probably way too many. Uh, however, they all work slightly differently. But if what you're looking for is current year tax savings, then the type of account that you want is something like a traditional IRA, maybe a traditional SEP IRA, something like that, that allows you to get a deduction in the current year. Now, I'm not an investment advisor. I'm not going to get into any of the specifics on this, but from a tax perspective, any amounts put into an account like that, which as a business owner, we have much higher limits than you know, the normal person may have that is contributing to one of these. So that's a really great thing to know is that if you open something like a SEP, you likely are going to have a higher contribution limit than you would if you were just opening a traditional uh, IRA on your own. So there's a lot of great retirement vehicles that are available for business owners that can allow you to prepare yourself and really save for uh, retirement and be able to save on taxes now. So one of the things that I always do if I have the cash to do it, I really try to max out my retirement accounts because I get to keep that money even though I'm not gonna touch it for a while, but I also get to not pay taxes on it. So that is a great way to be able to keep the money and still not have to pay taxes on it. So now we've made it, now we're to the bonus content where I'm gonna be telling you the one thing I don't want you to do. And this is a tip that I have seen all over TikTok uh, by people who I'm fairly certain are not CPAs talking about the fact that you should buy a car, specifically a car over 6,000 pounds, and you should write it all off and you can get a business deduction for the entire car. And the implication is almost like you get a free car, which 
Obviously, we've talked about deductions. Deductions are not free, right? They will reduce your taxable income, which is great and all, but a lot of times if you buy a big car and you write it off all in one year, you might even be operating at a loss. So it's not really gonna help you to have that write-off, okay? So you definitely don't wanna do that without an accountant's help and a specific uh, review by an accountant about whether that even makes sense to do. And it's important to note, which none of these TikTok videos do, that you can only write off the percentage you're using for business and you have to use it at least 50% for business. So I've seen so many people running out there saying, I'm gonna go get a you know, Range Rover that I'm gonna deduct to my business. And these are people that have home-based businesses. What are, where are you gonna be taking that Range Rover <laughs> that you think that you can deduct the entire thing for your business? It's very unlikely. So I think that this is one of those kind of dangerous places where uh, yes, there are some rules around section 179 and bonus depreciation and things like that, but that's not for the layman to really be uh, trying to figure out on your own. Work with a professional if you need a new car, okay, if you need a new car, buy it because you need it, not for the tax deduction, okay? And that's true for pretty much anything, but definitely true when we're talking about something as large as a car, because it can get really complicated and it probably won't save you as much as you think that it will. And so don't use the tax deduction as uh, motivation or as justification for going out and buying a car that you don't really need or buying uh, you know, a big, heavy, expensive vehicle just because of these special rules. Now, if you do decide to buy a new vehicle that you do need for your business, still definitely talk to an accountant about whether it makes sense to utilize some of these upfront write-offs or if you should just depreciate it as it normally would over time, which will give you a little bit of a deduction each year instead of all at once, right? You wanna be looking at not just this year, not just how to save the most this year, but what's gonna make the most sense over the long term, over the next three to five years, okay? So again, this is not a decision you wanna make in a vacuum. You definitely don't wanna make that decision based on a TikTok video, but you can make it based on a YouTube video. <laughs> just kidding, consult with an advisor. <laughs> all right. Thank you all. Hopefully this was really helpful for you. I have so many other resources on these topics that go a lot deeper if you're interested. So definitely go click on some of the links that I mentioned, download some of those freebies to help you get started, and I will see you next time.